Good afternoon, Scott Riley, T3 Live. Welcome to today's recap. It is Thursday. It's the end of the week. It's been a long one. It's been a choppy one, but there's been a lot of specific stock action. If we want to go over the indices first, after everyone's hooting and hollering about the not being able to close at highs, what does this mean? What does that mean? Meanwhile, here we are. I don't see any confetti. I don't see any balloons coming down. We closed at an all-time high. But really, the story's been the stocks. There's been so much movement across the board. But if you want to go through some of them and look at the indices first, you look here at the S&P. Here you go. Here is your spider. So actually, we'll do the SPX. Here is the move that started the year. It was really, really choppy. Then we broke the accelerated trend, broke the intermediate trend. And then, hey, look at that, a little red dog reversal. From their powerful move through prior congestion that digested and then continued. And then we've been pretty much grinding up waiting for the eight day to catch up. Eight day finally caught up. We are now hovering by the old highs. If you wanna just call this in technical land, what is this pattern here? This is, if this was a normal stock, this would be a bull flag, right? Here would be your um, pole, and then here would be your digestion, and then potentially continuation. It would be nice tomorrow to see some of that continuation. We shall see, but overall, very choppy, but within this choppiness, there's been a lot of stocks, a lot of movement, lots of things to do. As far as technology, let's take a quick look. The Qs um, hovering at the eight day above the prior highs. Um, let's look at the, the bios, you know, letting the eight day catch up above the prior highs. Home builders in uh, Fuego. Here you go. Look at that. Boom. This was your breakout held in there well. So with that being said, the indices have not been perfect, but on the move, and there's been a lot of stock movement. You wanted to go over some names. Let's take a look at where the action's been. Let's just start with Tesla, because that was my sore spot this morning. That was my stress spot. I came in short Tesla. I don't like to do that, but I saw the red dog reversal. I tried to stay with it, traded out of it very well, and now I'm away from that for a little bit. You look at Tesla over, overall, um, you know, this was, has been the move. This has been the, the, the trend. Here was your trigger price above uh, 615. Um, or 615, that's might where it be in about a year from now. But anyway, <laughs> 215, there was that big upgrade. Here was your uh, convertible PS, never went above 265. So even if you shorted it at 259 and you, you made some money yesterday and you came in short today, if you followed the red dog reversal strategy, you didn't have to get out. And you're still actually in the money using a strategy. If you shorted going into numbers, into earnings, and you cost averaged up here and you cost averaged up there, you're, you're, you're trading a plan that could blow you up. This was calculated and hopefully got a way out. Now we'll see what happens with this range. If it goes inside for a few more days and goes or breaks below prior support here and retraces a little bit. Let's move on from there. As far as other stocks, um, what did Netflix do today? Netflix digesting a really nice trend inside. Maybe that's a play for tomorrow. Let's look at Google. What's that doing? Digesting, going, digesting, is that a word? Going sideways. Um, perhaps we get a stretch there. Nice little action um, as far as that's concerned. Not really tradable, just I guess a trend. Um, look at CMG. CMG is something that I think is, is interesting. Um, I bought some today, I talked about it. Um, big gap up after earnings. It's been resting, going sideways. Nice little green bar perhaps above the prior high, it gets going. Might not do it on option expiration tomorrow, maybe next week, but overall, big gap up, holding, going sideways, perhaps that continues. Today, we finally got a nice trade in Apple. Woohoo! Um, <laughs> here is our topping tail, came in, tried a little red dog reversal a few days back, got engulfed, came in today flat, bought a little pre-market, stayed with it during the day, and uh, I took some home overnight. Decent, decent move today, right? You know, uh, it trade above the prior day's high, um, engulfed or took back some moving averages. I don't know how, how, what kind of move we'll have tomorrow. Hopefully, maybe they want to pin it at a 5.30 tomorrow for Option X to have the shareholder meeting, but nice tactical day. If you had a few paper cuts in here and made your money back today, congratulations. And now, in the scheme of things, you have a low, you have a higher low. Let's see if this builds and then maybe tries to take that out at some point. We'll see. As far as other tech names, uh, CRM, Look at that, boom, blockbuster move. What's FFID doing, F FFID I mean. Uh, starting on its way, eBay, gotta give it to my girls. They've been trying to stay in this one very, relatively well. 
Look at this, breaking above a long-term channel. I think I had this into my 2014 thesis. I got to check. Feels like that was uh, two years ago. It was only two months ago, but really nice move here. Hopefully, you made some money there. Today, the banks finally woke up. What does this mean? It could be really good for the market. It could help fuel the next leg. This is still an inside day, and we've seen green ones to be negated with red ones, but overall, in there, if this were to start taking out 2160, 2170, that, in my opinion, would help fuel the next leg up. Bank of America, still working on this, uh, on this pattern here. Held support, green day, haven't had two green days in a row. You know, strong ones at least, maybe. Tomorrow we get something through 1650, I would say. If this thing were to start getting above this prior high and make a new high and close above it, maybe it gets underway. Look how long this took, wore everyone out before it finally woke up, went sideways and broke above. Maybe this is your day one. This actually isn't even considered a day one. This is just considered a green day. Day one would be a, a break above this, and perhaps we get that soon. What did Goldman Sachs do? Goldman Sachs, eh, still ugly, still in the slower channel, but making its way. I think Morgan Stanley actually has a nicer pattern. People were talking about that today. Maybe tomorrow, if it doesn't run away too quickly, you get a decent trade through 30, 40 tomorrow. Still, the banks are not looking technically great, but that's the way it's been you know, most of this year. Uh, take a look in some other areas. Look at this. We talked about in the morning call, first solar. What type of earnings gap will it have? It gapped down into prior support, closed off the lows, filled the gap. Bam! This is back in the game. The, the, I guess they want the solar names to stay in vogue this year. With that being said, you have TSL, you know, trying to wake up. You had CSIQ yesterday, giving you a powerful day. Inside day today, maybe it continues tomorrow. SPWR still looks okay. Not ready to go yet, but one of these days, it feels like it should be ready for prime time above 35. Solar City with the Musk halo still above the 80 pivot. A um, lot to like there, a lot to think about there. BlackBerry, I still think it's acting very well. It's digesting this move in here. Um, can't have a blockbuster day every day. Uh, nice trade above this downtrend uh, two days or a few sessions ago. Follow through sideways. I think if you, you know, trade versus 1020, another session or so, I think we get a medium momentum trade above 1080 to get uh, into the 11s. And at some point in 2014, 12 or above, we shall see. But overall, digesting very well while these moving averages catch up. FIO, look at that. Woohoo, finally poked its head above this. See if that continues. Still a laggard trade, but working its way higher. Casinos, uh, <laughs> nice bull flag. Looks like there's still nothing stopping them for a little bit. MGM, too. Wow, I can't believe this move. You know, I've been talking about this since 8, 12 bucks, and, you know, <laughs> I wish I was still there. Hopefully, some of you, some of you tweeted me saying, could you take it out of the drawer yet? And I guess you can, but it looks like it might, uh, you know, Nick, make another move before uh, you have to uh, cash in your socks. Uh, but that looks okay. Um, what gold do today? Gold still letting the eight-day catch up. Uh, this was that little move that we talked about when it went above uh, 122 in the GLDs, and now it's consolidating. Let's see what happens next here. A um, little bit more time, and perhaps you get another setup. Uh, we'll see what, what happens next there. And uh, that's, that's really it. There's been a lot of action, lots of things to do, lots of areas to be, lots of stocks to trade. You know, hopefully you're reading off the charts. Every night we try and come up with a few ideas for you that you could put some bracket orders in if they trigger and where they could go or if they trigger and don't work where the stop could be. Hopefully you're reading the morning note. There's probably 10 to 30 stocks on there every single day where I talk about levels and if-then statements that you could put into your game plan. Um, I think it's March 10th, that becomes a paid-for product. And, ooh, I know, I'm sorry, it's a paid-for product. $150 for the year, $12 a month. Got to keep the lights on, the video staff happy, the editing team intact, and we want to get it out to you timely. Not the biggest, uh, you know, <laughs> biggest deal. The Morning Call Express is free. The recap is free. The Morning Note and the 20-minute long-form version, which is very tactical, um, <laughs> Could be, uh, you know, will be part of that Scott Redler, you know, all access with a private Twitter feed. So anyway, don't be upset about that. If you read the email, I've been getting some back, you know, back and forth from some of you out there. But if you actually read it and use it as a strategy, I don't think you'll have a problem with uh, the, the, you know, the small little charge that we have to put on there. 
Um, moving forward, it's Thursday, tomorrow's option expiration, we're closing at highs, the newspapers could finally print uh, a few articles, I think we're at highs, we're somewhere around there. Anyway, that's not what's important. What's important is following the stocks, trading the action, knowing your time frame, not being too frustrated, and putting the days and weeks and months together so you could be happy, you can go home and take the dog out, play with the kids, take the wife out for date night, do whatever it is you do that makes you happy, and hopefully the market helps you do that, and hopefully we help you do that. Have a great night.